see the difference in two coaches there one coach you wouldn't even have to know the scoreboard would you just tune uh, in now and you'd know which team was winning exactly i mean you can see don's been a bit frustrated there and, and the play you can hear the players they're all a bit quick and at the other end they're all calm and and, and bill's telling these players to keep working off the ball to keep their players away from the basket albert springs into the line of occasions already tonight and he's moving up towards 20 points by half time I think you can see uh, you know, Rockhampton's a team who, who score well over 100 points a game and 111 you know, they're averaging this season well they're at 32 at the moment with two minutes to go so that's how good a job that uh, Franks is doing with the defense and taking them out of their game they nearly play uh, defense as well as the AIS don't they as Franks and team Gordy yeah, well, uh, they're just, just behind us, and that's one thing we did very well this year. We played good defence, and teams scored about 90 points a game on us. That's one thing we we're very happy with. Blackley's third foul, sending uh, Green to the line. You wonder what the JD stands for. It's uh, John David. This, uh, well, visually from uh, Pittsfield in Massachusetts. Uh, graduated from uh, California State University, Fullerton, in Los Angeles. But uh, like his namesake, AC Green, the former Los Angeles Laker, he likes just the initials. John David, JD. Yeah, Don Shepard's a bit unhappy there with uh, the call there by Alan Godden. He, Kelvin Muspat's been uh, stepping in early on the foul shots and he got him again there. And he's just saying, well, you know, if he doesn't go in early, I won't call it. tip in from uh, Bullenberg. Yeah, good second effort there and that's one thing that they'll have to do. They must block Frankston out because they are, they are a good rebounding team. They go to the offensive boards very hard. Darren Richardson. Well, they haven't been successful from out there. One of 11. Rockets in the three-point shooting. Newsom. Goes back after it, but Campbell tips it down. Kavanaugh, and it ends up with uh, Muspratt. And the foul called on Bayside's Ridgeway is called for the foul. Yeah, good offensive rebound here coming up to Kent Kavanaugh. He gets up strong then, gets a slap across the arm there. A good effort to follow up there. Now we must capitalise and make these two. Sitting down with three fouls. Ridgeway. Seeing court time for the first time. Adam Burke, just uh, 16 years of age. <laughs> Youngest player in uh, either team, wearing number 42 for the Bayside Blues. So with a 15-point uh, break coming up to half-time, here he is, seeing a bit of court time. Yeah, well, Bill's quite obviously got a lot of confidence in him to give him the go. Springs. Well, he's out. been absolutely dynamic in this first half. Well, you can't, you can't let Albert Springs get the ball there on the low block because he'll make that move on you all night. So Rockhampton going to have to do something about that in the break and uh, make some adjustments to, if they're going to have any chance. All but about two seconds on that game clock for Rockhampton, but it's going to be all Frankston's now. The travel on green. I think uh, Rockhampton a little bit frustrated here, and uh, they're going to have to have a good talk at the halftime and then settle themselves down and, and come out and play two very good quarters. Springs with 20 points, ball in hand. Must be playing the D on him. This would be the icing on the first half. Kate, down it goes from Reese Newsom. A 20-point lead at halftime for the Frankston Bayside Blues, who've gone out in the quarterfinals over the last, uh, what, two, three years in the, uh, the CBA, the national playoffs. And, uh, well, they're halfway towards the national championship grand final in 95.
Frankston's guns, Springs and uh, Muhlenberg, 20 and 19 points uh, respectively, Gordy. And uh, McCloskey, the gun player for Rockhampton, only four points but four fouls. I mean, 20 points down. Don Shepard's got everything against him, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has. He'd be a very worried coach at the moment because his team's not really playing with any any real teamwork. They, get, they had some opportunities early in the first quarter and they didn't finish them off the way they should be. A um, little bit disappointing, I suppose, from McCluskey. He looked like he was getting frustrated, but all credit's got to go to the Frankston's defence. I mean, they come out, they got after him, they got in the lanes, they really worked hard, and that paid off for him because they got some, some good transition baskets, and from there they just built from, built from strength to strength. Uh, the other concerning thing for, for Rockhampton would be, and for coach uh, Don Shepard would be, is their defence at the moment. They're allowing Frankston too much latitude on penetration to the basket, and also Frankston are getting too many easy, easy uh, post-ups around the basket. Albert Springs is going to work in there, and also Troy Muhlenberg. He's, you know, he's not shooting that well at the moment, but he's backing up a lot uh, and offensive rebounding the ball very well. So, very worrying time for Rockhampton, but... Uh, Frankston and I, we said from the start, if they uh, their defence could dominate and uh, Rockhampton didn't have a good shooting night, they'd be, they'd be in for a lot of trouble. And that's exactly the way it's worked out at half-time. Tonight, as you watch this program, the action is at the Elfin Sports Centre. Starting at 7.30, the women's semi-final in the CBA between Launceston, who have really hit form at the right end of the season, and the Mackay Meteorettes. You're going to want to get there early. They've pre-sold a lot of tickets for that game at the Elfin Sports Centre in Launceston. While the other men's semi-final is tomorrow at the Nunawading Stadium. This should be a blockbuster between the Nunawading Spectres and the defending CBA champions looking to go two in a row for the first time ever in the CBA, the Ballarat Miners. And you want to get there early for that one as well. So that will decide the, the grand final makeup in the uh, CBA, the winner of that game versus the winner of this one, which might have had to have been postponed at halftime, if not for Artie ABC. Tim and the boys, I don't know if it's in their work statement, but they fixed the U-bolt. The backboard was broken by young 15-year-old David Anderson going for a slam. The young uh, Bayside player. I wonder if uh, he'll see some action in the second half, Gordy. Because, uh, well, 20 points is the cushion. Maybe not just yet for a while. No, but if, uh, if Frankston start uh, the second second half the way they did the, the first, it won't be too long before he'll be in there, I don't think. Blackley giving the ball to Springs, shooting it at 85% in the first half. Albert Springs, and uh, well, he started off well. Troy Muhlenberg now uh, goes past Springs as the top scorer in the game. 64% from the field from Muhlenberg. Not too bad in the first half, Gordy. No, not too bad. Um... There's McCloskey missing, though. He would have liked to have lost, knocked that down. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a little bit frustrated at the moment, but uh, hopefully he can settle down and, and Rockhampton can start to make a charge. Oh, they're just dominating on the offensive glass. Thrown back in by Peter Wayne. He had the initial shot. Third shot opportunity goes down. Well, they, that's where they got to start from. They got to start at the defensive boards. If they're going to make a miss, they better be getting the ball back so they can then make a charge at the other end. Out off Wayne. So it's a uh, Rockets ball. Two of their starting five with four fouls. Kavanagh and McCloskey. This is Kavanagh with it. I'm sure Bill Runchy would be up there encouraging the guys to keep the pressure on and so they can blow this right out. Ah, three points. That's the way to start. Darren Richardson. Yeah, well, hopefully he's going to find some touch this half because he's, he's been a very good shooter for him, but it's been a bit cold tonight. Yes, just under 19 points per game this season for Richardson. He's now double figures, the top scorer in the Rockets lineup. Muhlenberg. Now, uh, this time they uh, crash the boards a bit harder. McCloskey comes up with it for the Rockets. Green protecting it from Blackley. Good ball movement from the Rockets. Another three, not quite, for Richardson. He would like that one to have gone down. <laughs> Blackley moving the ball around the perimeter inside to uh, Springs. Newsom couldn't bring it down, so another stop for Frank, uh, for Rockhampton. McCluskey might have been a bit lucky there, but uh, the referees didn't call the foul, so he, uh, he'll have to take advantage of that now. Kavanagh 
The screen from Leploski. Kavanagh banks it in from up high, not quite. Nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Nice penetration by Blackley. Steve Blackley makes the difference, 23 points. Yeah, nice drive to the basket there. Finished off nicely with the left hand. McCloskey goes all the way back to Kavanagh. Three-pointers is obviously what uh, the coach has called for to get them back into it. Muskrat slipped over, and now the foul called on Wayne to the line. Brian McCloskey. Yeah, but Frankston, they really get after it on the, on the defensive board. They're always... They're always getting up. You can see him here scrapping, and, and re there was a reaching foul there on Peter Wayne. But they're not giving Rockhampton any, any pleasure there, and I think that's uh, Peter Wayne's fourth foul. Six points for Brian McCloskey. Good that's defense. a charge. No. no. Well, I thought I was with you, Geordie. Uh, that's five fouls on Kavanagh. He can't believe it. It might have been a bit unlucky there, but uh, the referee's just got to call it the way he sees it, and he reckoned it was a block. Now the inbounds. Oh, that's uh, goaltending on McCluskey. Basket will count for Troy Muhlenberg. And it dropped down through the cylinder, and McCluskey punched it back up. I guess that's one way to try and stop him. 23 points is the lead. Well, like bumping off the ball there. You can see Albert, Albert Springs uh, bump young uh, Darren Richardson there. And I don't think he was too happy with that. I'm sure Albert's had this joke and told before, but one of our uh, smart uh, uh, Alec camera guys says that uh, Albert's wife's name's Alice because she also plays in the centre. <laughs> Frankston's in a zone here, and they've been zoning from out of bounds on the baseline there. It's something they've done uh, all year, and it's worked very effectively for them. They've got oh, the ball back again. Almost got it to Kelvin Muspratt. Wayne. They call that time. Green knocked the ball away, and this time uh, Kevin has fouled. They came at him from everywhere. Is that Peter Wayne? Yes, that's his fifth foul. And he gets good applause. But he's been replaced by the captain, Mark Ridgeway. There's one thing that Frankston have. They have a lot of depth in this team, especially their first seven. Very solid. Richardson stopping and propping from the foul line. Makes the difference 21 points. He looks like he's made his mind up that he's going to make something happen for uh, Rockhampton. The Muhlenberg really makes it happen. They've got their tails up at the moment. They're going to be very hard to pull back from here. So we see what sort of character Rockhampton will have. Green trying to lob it into McCloskey. And he was sort of off balance. He'd slipped. Then this travel. Newsom unhappy. Muhlenberg is pinpoint accurate with that uh, long downcourt pass. Yeah, it's part of uh, Frankston's game that uh, they're not really renowned to be a fast-breaking team, but uh, tonight they're looking to push the ball down there, and you can see him just shuffle the field a little bit. Here's a and steal. there's a steal on halfway. Ridgeway and makes the mistake this time from uh, Newsom. A timeout called by... A very disappointed looking Don Shepard. Well, you can just see the way the players are walking off the floor there with the, the Rockhampton boys. They weren't too happy, but look at the, the difference at the other end. Frankson have come out, cranked up the defense, and uh, they're going away with it here. Here's the steal on half court. Kavanagh did a little flip, a little bit cavalier. Newsom in that gets pass. up here, probably not renowned for dunking, but he gets up there and hang ones down. I hope it wasn't. He's got a great bit. spring, hasn't he, for uh, yeah. a guy who uh, is 185 centimetres tall. Well, I hope that rings the right height. They don't have an answer. All right. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Every possession, play defense. All right. He's taking it to the basket. He's paired up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
you can hear there from uh, from Bill Runchy. He said they, they don't have an answer to our defense. He said keep the pressure on and play defense every possession. That has been a trait that, that, that they've played with the whole year, so they're continuing on in the finals here, and it's worked very well for them uh, here tonight. Here comes, there's been a set play called here, so we'll see what uh, Rockhampton come up with. Seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, or just under. 25 points down are the Rockets. Richardson comes up short on a rebound from Springs. And the Rockets have to get back very quickly. That hurts. Yeah, he's really hot at the moment. Reese Newsom, he's got 12 points. They start hitting the three-pointers as well. Rocky are gone. Yeah, well, they're, uh, I think they're fairly, they've got their head partly underwater here, and I, the Frankston might be going to push it all the way here in a minute, I think. Well answered. Kent Kavanagh showing some, uh, some spirit. The running hook misses from uh, the Springs. McCloskey doesn't mind putting it on the floor. Richardson, a bit of a hope shot, but he's fouled there by Newsom. Well, they're booing, like but they're that. smiling at the same time, for Frankston fans. We well, can't let the referee uh, feel like uh, they like him too much. But uh, Darren Richardson looks like he's really uh, got the bit between his teeth and he's, uh, he's really out here having a go. So he needs a few of his teammates to, to have the same sort of approach and uh, see what they can do to Frankston. They've had a good year and uh, you know, they're going to have to fight very hard here and to see if they can get a little bit of pride back. Newsom being guarded by Campbell. Springs takes it to McCloskey and he yes. charges. Yeah, good call there. Albert uh, started to go and then realised that he, he wasn't there and McCloskey made the referee uh, make sure that he seen that he was hit by taking a little uh, dive back. And uh, good call there to the charge. Well, they're not giving an inch, these Frankston fans. Get a stop, they're yelling out. Now well, Ridgeway fell over and Green able to bank it in. Yeah, what about the foul as well, <laughs> Don Shepard say? Yeah, but it might have been a charging foul, so he was, uh, I'm not sure which way to go there, but they were the ones they wanted to drop a bit earlier, but uh, let's see what they can, if they can keep that touch going. They might be able to put a run on. Draws the defense, kicks it out to Ridgeway. Well battled Troy Muhlenberg. And Richardson with it. It looks like he's made up his mind in the, the halftime break. But I'm going to get things happening for us. Yeah, he's, he's been working hard in the third quarter here. The lob oh. in, and there it is from Muspratt. Another assist for uh, McCloskey. Well, that, that should bring a little bit of confidence back. A nice alley-oop play there. Blackley, sort of tall timber, McCloskey in the way. Muhlenberg way off balance there. He says he was pushed, that's why. Green. Well, yeah, I think you'll see a timeout here. They've made a couple of quick buckets here. And yeah, Bill Runch, he's called a timeout. Been anchored on 70 points for uh, two or three minutes now, Frankston. They set up again. Three-pointer, that uh, gets into 73 in a hurry. First successful three-point attempt from Albert Springs. And yeah, 20 like points the difference. It's not really uh, not really Albert's game out there, but that's a nice three-pointer from him. And now I think uh, you'll see from a turnover there, Rockhampton just tried to push the play a bit. But now that uh, he's made that, Stewie might have, Rio might have to come out and play him a bit tight and he'll look to drive. Just Springs' third three-pointer successful for this season. Ridgeway had it go in and out. To cut the lead to under 20 again. Rocky. Muspratt. Rioch gets it eventually. No. 
Good effort there by, uh, by Stewie, and also uh, it was good to see Musbrat post up there and put a move on. Well, Groom's really been uh, doing the defensive work on Muhlenberg, but there he pops up for the long-range jumper. Well, that might do something for his confidence too. I don't think he's renowned as a, a good perimeter shooter, so if he can start to make a couple, and then uh, that might open up his penetrating game as well. He's got six points in the half green. Too much traffic to get through there for Muhlenberg. Ridgeway, they can't leave him alone out there. Yeah, Don Shepard's not happy with the defence there. There's um, not enough communication out there and the player switched off and they left, uh, left him wide open there and he wasn't going to take it. But when no one came, he just stood back and thought, well, I'll take this three and, and knocked it down nicely. Under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Rioc over the top of Springs. Yeah, nice play there. Screen and roll on the board there and then powered it inside. Yeah, nice left-handed uh, little running hook there by uh, Blakely. He didn't make too many in the first half, but he's making some now. Richardson misses. He hadn't taken a shot for a while. Uh, perhaps a little bit uh, too much to hope he could hit that one in amongst the forest of players. Muhlenberg gets past Rioch. Got away from Green there with that nice little spin move on the high post. Yeah, well, Rockhampton has to come out and play Frankston a little bit tighter. And with Frankston running some nice motion there, they've forced them out wider, and now they're penetrating and taking it to the hole. Green call for the offensive foul. Um, no. Yes. Yeah, Ridgeway was Ridgeway. Right there, yeah. yeah. Green said, me? Yeah, it wasn't. Well, the shot went up and uh, it just gave him a bit of a, a push out the way in the rebounding situation. Rioch, 75% from the line this season. He gets both. 21 points down, though, are the Rockets. They haven't really been able to make too much impression in this second half. Seems a little bit strange there that yeah. Stewie's has the mark on Alfred Springs out in the floor, but he's really having a go at it. Yeah, enjoyed he's carrying the ball there for a while. This is Cotter, number 10. Newsom. Now he's pulled the rebound down, so he's made some things happen for Rockhampton. Oh, another turnover. Springs. Springs. They've got all the time left on the game clock. Muhlenberg decides to let go of the three. Rioch comes down with it. So to cut the deficit to under 20 with a quarter to go. Oh, almost. Connor got it. The athletic uh, Blackley, who likewise, they get it away in time. Was it above the ring? Muhlenberg, great <laughs> interception there, and he got it. Yeah, but Don Shepard's not very happy with the referees there. He felt that, uh, that maybe there was a foul there and that one should have been called and the guy got the three-point shot away just here. They, there's a scramble for the ball here and, and the Frankston guys are really getting after it. And you'll see a bit of contact here. There's some there and there's also, but the hands back by the defensive players, the referee said that he would, the, the offence was causing the contact and uh, that's a pretty good call, but I don't think you're going to penalise the defence there. So 12 minutes of basketball left for the Blues. Don Shepard looked like he's gone back to his starters here, so he's going to make a, make a last run here and see, uh, see what they can make happen. Yes, it's make or break for the Rockhampton Rockets. They've got McCloskey on five fouls, number 44. And he comes up with that tip and then he's fouled. No, over and back. Gee, unlucky there. What he's got him there is an over and back. He, he jumped up and he, had, he, he landed and pivoted into the front court and then stepped into the back court. He's on five fouls, as is Trent Kavanagh. But make or break for the Rockets. Turnaround from Wayne goes down. You must get a hand up on Peter Wayne. That's his trademark, that little 15-foot jumper there. Averaging 14 and a half per game. 
this season. Six in this semi-final. Green can't lose Muhlenberg. Potter's in there scrapping away, and he's setting the tempo for their defense at the start here. So, Cotter starting for Blackley. That's the change to the Frankston starting five. Gets another opportunity. The foul, though, from Muhlenberg on uh, a disappointed Muspratt. Yeah, nice pass there from Kevin Hay. Penetrated, put it inside, and, and Muspratt should have, should have finished that off. You know, it's point blank there. He should have just put it off. Here we go here. Should have just kissed that off the glass and missed it. Peter Wade's out with his fifth foul on that play. And uh, he's had a reasonable night at the office, but uh, he normally knocks down a few more than that, but I'm sure he'd be happy where the team is at the moment. Blackley has come in for Wayne. Muspratt, 12 points in the game. Here's something different. Yes. They're pressing up. They look like they're in a 2-2-1 press. Muhlenberg looking for someone to give it to. They're looking to trap it in different areas. Blackley. This Cotter, he is a live wire. He wanted the ball right from the moment the inbounds pass came. And when he got it, he made no mistake. Yeah, nice, nice three-point shot there. The Rockhampton have uh, they've come out and showed a little bit of uh, a little bit of a different look there with a bit of pressing on the foul shot. So it'll be interesting to see if they continue that. There's a three-on-one break. Springs or oh, showtime from the Blues. A little flick back to Blackley at full pace. Yeah, very unselfish play there by Albert. He is, he is renowned as a good passer. And uh, I think he showed his skills there. Just there, flicks it right back. No look pass back. Easy two points. Yeah, they really like him down here. Real team man, Albert Springs. McCloskey trying to make the contact. Springs has laid off him. Let the two-point basket go down. Yeah, they've extended the defence up here and they're looking to trap and steal every opportunity now. Well, with just ten minutes to go, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's been a terrific season from the Rockets to get this far, but I'm sure in their uh, fine form last week when they beat Keylor convincingly. Yeah, they've changed up here now. They're looking to press on a, on a made basket and they've gone back into a 2-3 zone. So they're hoping to, to force uh, Frankston to the perimeter and then rebound the ball and run a bit. They've got, they've got a miss. So let's see what happens here. Kroski pulls up. That's exactly. You'll see them press up here now. They're pressing up 2-2-1 going back into a zone. Cotter gets the ball out to Blackley. Newsom. So a good change up here by, uh, by Don Shepard. He's got Frankson just standing around a little bit. Before when they were playing man to man, there was a lot of motion, a lot of movement. Now they've got him standing on the Cotter for another three. Oh, it just comes loose. They're going to rebound the ball though. If they're going to get a miss, they've, they've got to get, give them no second shots. See the difference in Frankston here now. A lot more standing around, whereas if when they were in man to man, they had a lot of movement. Why not? Welcome back, Cotter. 7.48 left to go in this uh, CBA first semi final. I guess, Peter, when you look at their 66 points for a team who's been scoring 111 or whatever, it, I think it's, it's testament, just, isn't it? To yes, this, uh, it's the way they are, and I, I mean, you've got to give credit to Frankston. You know, they play very good defence. They have a reputation of being a good defensive team, and uh, they certainly showed that tonight. Well, it is not impossible. 24 points down with 7.48 to go. Melbourne Tigers in the NBL last year in the same position against the Brisbane Bullets. Yeah, but I don't Won think... an improbable game. They don't have an Andrew Gaze, so, do they? Or Leonard no. Copeland. Kavanagh. Oh, a big rebound from Muhlenberg. I don't think uh, Ken Kavanagh's too happy. I think uh, he's not too happy with the way Cotter's defending him. He's, uh, he's playing pretty tough on him. 
foul on Green. And I guess the thing that gets a little bit uh, frustrating for players is, and I think you can see Don, Don Shepard over there, he's saying, well, you know, what's happening on one end doesn't seem to be happening at the other end. But those things seem to tend to happen as a coach when you're, uh, when you're getting a bit of a bit. But Rockhampton back out in man-to-man -man here, so they've, they've changed up a bit again. Some court time, uh, Matthew Vidoni, number 12. This is the first jump ball of the night. Foskey and Muhlenberg. Or is it three? Three. And it just shows where Franks, they're just are too hungry on the on the boards at both ends of the floor. And uh, I think that's been a... I, I think that that's come from, from the defence that Franks has started. They've, they've had that same determination on the boards all night. Muhlenberg looking to find Fedoni. No, poor decision there. Troy wouldn't be too happy with, uh, with that pass. He just forced that a little bit. Fedoni guarding Musprat. Musprat might want to uh, see if he can beat Fedoni with his quickness. Kavanaugh banks it in. Yeah, nice move. He's played yeah. smart basketball and five fouls for a long time. Yeah. They've extended the pressure, though. They've picked their man-to-man -man up, up the floor. Muhlenball with the, with the baseball pass, and this time he doesn't travel. Newsom held that pivot foot well. Six ten to go in this CBA semi-final. Cavanaugh scraps for it well. Yeah, at this, at this stage of the game, Rockhampton are really playing for pride here, and, uh, and it's, it's good to see him still going hard. The referees are letting the game flow a bit. Basket from Kelvin Musprat. And, and the game might look like it's, uh, it's sort of going to be a bit scrappy, but that's, that's the way that Rockhampton have to make it. I mean, if they just let uh, Frankston come down, down the floor, a good charge. They're not happy with that. It looked like uh, Cotter pushed off a bit and Kavanaugh made the right decision on which way, which way to go. Again, there's smiles amongst the boos. They can't see the team losing from here. 5.45 to go 20 points up with Bill Runchy. Well, oh, I think yeah, he's a Kev bit unhappy under the smile. And I was just looking over the bench there, and uh, Kent Kavanaugh is not too well. Uh, he's just been, I think he's just been a bit sick on the bench, so you know, like uh, he, he might have been struggling a little bit tonight. Frankson just throwing the ball around now. Cotter, a slap of the ball, hand on ball from Campbell, who sets away Richardson. Oh, intentional foul call there, and uh, rightly so. I mean, he, he tacked him too aggressively there. The referee said that uh, he didn't really make a fair, a fair attempt at the ball, and um, he's went at the man. I mean, Kent Kavanaugh's not well on the bench there. He's, uh, he's just getting rid of it. Ridgeway called for that... Uh, so what will happen here? Like foul. Yeah, they'll get two shots and then get the ball back from the halfway. So Kent, yeah, Kevin Kent. And up for it obviously has uh, come here under an enormous cloud, and it's just time to tell after some hard running. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. He might have uh, the pre-game meal. Or something didn't uh, agree with him, and he had to get rid of it. So, so from the side. Rockets have the ball, having cut the lead to 19 from the line. A chance to, to, to get it back down again here. Good defence by Muhlenberg. Green not happy from the, with the pass from Frank Frankston are going to their zone here. You can see him in a 2-3 zone there. They've done that all night along the baseline. Trapped in the corner there. McCloskey loses Ridgeway. They want threes. Richardson can't give them that one. Vidoni, well, he battled hard enough, but uh, Richardson's got it. He's scrapping a little bit better now. Oh, nice what pass. a glorious pass from McCloskey. And, oh, bad luck for Musprat not to get the roll, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, nice pass there by, by McCloskey. You can see him here. He's got good vision. He's going to take the three, but he's seen Musprat underneath, and the foul was called. 
I guess, uh, you know, that play there is an indication of virtually what happened all night for them. They've got the ball in a good scoring position in the paint, and they just haven't been able to finish off. No. Shot at a 35% as opposed to Frankston's 50. And then when they get the opportunity on the foul line, they can't finish that off as well. So that's playing on the road, though, you know. It's, and that's one of the advantages of uh, having a good year and playing consistently throughout the year so you get the home court advantage in the playoffs. Yes, the uh, Rockets finished on top of the Northern Conference. Lost to the, the grand final to Southern Districts from uh, Brisbane 2-1. But uh, we're looking at the Southern Conference champions here. Two out of the last uh, three years. Bill Runchy's team. There's a big, uh, big roar coming on for the young 15-year-old. Uh, well, I hope uh, that new U-bolt that the ABC boys put up there is strong enough to handle 15-year-old David Anderson. You might uh, be out here scouting tonight. That's why you're here. The AIS interested in him or not? Well, um, when, you, when you have... Uh, a young fellow at that size at that age uh, he'll be playing for victoria in the uh, up and coming under 16 championships in geelong on the in the first week in october and uh, i'll be down there with the ais looking at future uh, scholarship holders so we'll be having a getting a sneak preview tonight 204 centimeters he is but uh, mccloskey yeah and i think that's a little bit too late he got the ball in the paint there and that's been a trademark for him this year with this team and it's Anderson. Rio jams it out of his hands well. Green. Great experience, though, for the young fellow. McCloskey, 15 points, 11 after half time. Under four minutes to go. Rock Campus credit, though, they're, they're still out there and they're pushing up the floor and they're, they're still working hard. Way directing the youngster, shooting the three, and came back over the hands of Anderson. Green oh. charge, and what's that? Charge him out of the game. Yeah, well, an interesting call this one. One thing that here we here we see here on the break there. Well, I mean you be the judge. I mean, like I said before. It's a close between a block or a charge, and the referee's adjudicated the charge. So I guess if you're Rockhampton, you're thinking, well, that's the way it's gone all night. Um, if you're Frankston, you say, well, we've been rewarded with good defence. J.D. Green, 14 points in the game, five rebounds. Albert's not too happy there. He feels like he's got fouls, so... They're uh, giving a little bit of their own medicine back. Team foul starting to rack up now. Don Shepard's going to have a little chat with the referee here and find out what's going on. Well, it was two fouls, but we actually didn't get the ball back in court. This one on Richardson. Yeah, well, that was definitely a foul. I mean, they get him into the bonus, so I don't know if that's the, the right way to go about it. Ridgeway, 88% from the line this season. To give themselves any chance, though, they, they're going to have to they're going to have to come down and score quickly, and they're going to have to stop Franks. And now, whether they stop that with by by fouling him and say, "Well, you're going to beat us on the foul line," or whether they can get get a few steals and get something happening here, this will be handy. Oh, Travel Rings grabbed it and then took off. Yeah, there was no one down. I think he was looking for the outlet pass. There was no one there, so he, he put it down a, a bit late. I think he got a bit excited there. Could see a uh, dunk coming up from one of his teammates. 17 points the difference. McCloskey, nice inside to Rio. There's still some hope. 15 points the difference inside three minutes. It's one thing McCloskey's done well. He's shown tonight that he's a good passer. So, you know, like, uh, you know, Don, Don Shepard. With his there he is with the steal, too. He'd be, Rio. be pretty happy. They with wanted him. to travel the fans. Pull back for the three, Richardson. Whoa, this is getting interesting now. 12 points the difference. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Bill Runchy stays with the, with the same group. It's down the... Two on one here, Dan Anderson finally found, and 
the backboard's intact, but more importantly for Frankston, two points, and that gets the fans up on their feet. Yeah, nice dunk there, but Stewie Rio shouldn't really went to him. McCloskey, he's firing it right out to the finish, and they throw it away, Frankston. Well, two minutes, so there's, still, there's still time here. I mean, two minutes is a long time in a game of basketball. Well, well he's come got down, out make to 28. They this hit this one. Interesting. That would have made the difference nine points, and Anderson did well there, batted it down to Newsom. Just slow it up now. Darren yeah, Richards is looking left. a bit tired over there. Just got to look after the ball now, Frankston, you think? It's going to get shortly to the stage where they're going to have to send them to the line. That was classy. Yeah, that'll steal him down. I mean, I mean that that typifies uh, Troy uh, Muhlenberg. I mean, he's a real competitor. The team needed a basket, and he he nailed it. And that's 30 points for him. Yeah, right on his season average. Richardson wants the foul. It's a three-on-one here. Who's going to get the basket? Neither of them. Oh, Muspratt nearly oh. beat four players then, and then a foul from Richardson. Yeah, Richardson wasn't wasn't happy. He felt he got fouled at the other end, and it wasn't called, and he wasn't too happy about that. So down the other end, he retaliated. Here it is. You see, he just makes a a very uh, poor attempt to go in the basketball. Maybe lucky that he's yeah, it intentional was for that. Yeah, sportsmanlike. Well, they've shot it just over 50% from the line. It could have been well and truly over if they'd been a bit more accurate from the strike. I mean, Rockhampton are probably wondering, well, you know, why couldn't we have done this in the first half? I mean, uh, they'd, they'd be a little bit frustrated. Yeah, defensively, the they've looked at different teams since uh, the break. Not the alley oop that time. No. Looked like they wanted to go out in the blaze there. 15-year-olds are looking younger every year. <laughs> He's not a policeman, is he? Looks for an alley -oop pass here, throws it up. Oh, it would have been spectacular if it come off. And there's the foul, Rioch, on young David Anderson. It's good to see Bill Runchy. Uh, this is great experience for this young fellow. And uh, to, to, to step up and to play in a, in a CBA final, um, this semi-final, it, it's a great, uh, great thing for Bill Runch to do to have the conference to put the young fellow in. He stands up and knocks one of the foul shots down. Yeah, three points for Anderson coming up through the, the junior program here at Frankston. And, well, let's hope there's a big future ahead for him. Rioch? No, it's not. It's McCloskey. Yeah, nice, nice little left-hand finger roll there. Inside the last three quarters of a minute, Difference back out to 15 points. Muspratt. Second foul. And all the bench getting a run now. Yeah, Bill, Bill Runchy's uh, bringing out some of his starters here and to let the crowd uh, show their appreciation for the fine effort that they've done. Albert Spring sits down. Just three points after half time. And I think you'll find that Troy Muhlenberg will come out if he makes this foul shot as well. Replaced by another youngster. And over his uh, regular season average per game, Muhlenberg, 32, a very happy man. And rightly so. He's, uh, he's been very consistent all year for him. Well, uh, Same tonight. it's gone to the script, hasn't it? They're averaging 101 points per game this season, and that's what they've got on the board. The Frankston Blues, they haven't quite finished. Can he catch it? Adam Burke. Nice play by the young 16-year-old. Yeah, he really Chased head the down the down. court, didn't he? But there's the foul on uh, Matthew Vidoni. <laughs> These fans want it all. They've got a place in the grand final next week. Yeah, well, they've deserved it. They've, uh, they've definitely been... Uh, uh, one of the most consistent teams in, in our division down here, and uh, they've, they've, they've deserved it finalists. I mean, uh, them and Ballarat have been the two strong teams, and there's been nothing between them all year. Um, but 
a little bit different teams. Uh, Frankston more more solid defensively. Ballarat athletic and uh, like to get out and run. So uh, well, it might not be that. Might that could be none of what they played great I mean, defensive basketball. Wouldn't that be a defensive? Oh, that was a nice uh, little uh, hip and shoulder there by Big Stewie. He's called the intentional foul. <laughs> Don Shepard's not too happy over here. On the, here we see the replay here. Stewie just goes in. Oh, I just don't think he could stop. He had that uh, momentum up. The big body was moving And Wayne forward. Bennett might be looking for him for the Broncos next year. With a nice head on there. Don Shepard doesn't really know what's going on over here. He's not too happy. North Queensland crashes. He'd have to play for, wouldn't he? Oh, well. Still. Yeah, probably would. <laughs> Well, uh, Alan Gotten, uh, I think he's saying, well, with, with 17 seconds to go, there's no need to, uh, to get too carried away. He'll just keep a handle on what's going on. Steve Connolly, number 25. And nice move by the by young won't count. And yes, it will. Showed good poise there, Anderson. He pump faked him up in the air there and then went up nice and strong. And... Uh, Ridgeway sits down, the very popular captain, with 10 points. Yeah, very, very happy Frankston crowd here at the moment. Their team's through to the grand final, and I'm sure they're uh, all excited about the possibility of the championship coming back here. And uh, Frankston won the uh, ABL title back in 1982, as it was then known. They weren't the Blues then, they were the Bears, so it's been a long time between drinks. Yeah, they just just changed the B, I suppose, but uh, I was saying earlier about Frankston and Ballarat, and I was talking about how they've been the most consistent teams in, in, in this division on this side, and they'll be very interesting because Nutter Wadding, a very good team, and uh, they've hit form at the right time. <laughs> well, there he is. A smart a play. play from uh, a very clever player. He's been playing under duress. The final basket won't count. Ken Cavanagh getting that last points for a very gallant Rockhampton Rockets. They've come down here and found the job just a little bit beyond them against the Frankston Blues, who are the first team through to the CBA Grand Final with a uh, very deserved 17-point win. Yeah, well, they uh, they deserved the victory in it. It, it all comes from, from their defence. They've been a very strong defensive team all year and they carried that through in this semi-final tonight. And they deserve it, uh, winners to go through to the grand final. In his fourth year at the Frankston Stadium, now into the first championship grand final. Albert Springs, uh, this is what you've been working for. What's made the difference in 95 for the team? Uh, I think we have a good good chemistry as a team. Everyone plays hard, everyone has a role, and you know, we have the same goal, just to get to Sydney, and we're on our way. Well, tonight, uh, only three points for you after half time, but uh, in the first half, you scored and kept uh, their gun, McCloskey, to just four. You'd have to be super happy with that. Well, yeah, you know, that, that was our game plan to keep, uh, he's the MVP of the North, I take it, and uh, he's a great player, and I just want to concentrate on him, and I just took what they gave me. Well, in the end, they outscored you by three points in the second half, but now that you have made it through to the grand final, is that a, a good base, you know, having to work hard right to the finish? Well, we've had three three very hard games. We had to come behind in the last three, and, uh, you know, it, with just hard work, we, you know, we're where we want to be at. So, uh, next week. I know you're going to say you don't care who you play, well, it's, but it's going to be none awarding or a rematch with Ballarat. Uh, both are tough teams, and uh, we're just looking forward to whoever comes out on top. And uh, we're just going to go on with the same game plan, and hopefully we we'll come away with a championship. Okay, Albert, to you and the rest of the team, well done here tonight. Thank you, appreciate well done, Al. it. Albert Springs, very popular here. American import at Frankston. Gordy McLeod, uh, well, you'd have to concur with everything he said, but uh, they seem to follow the game plan to the letter that uh, Bill Ranchi set them. Yeah, they, they were definitely the better team tonight. Their defence led the way for them, and, and like Albert said, that all of them uh, know what their roles are. They've got a mission. They wanted to get to the final. 
They certainly showed that tonight. And I think the thing that uh, Coach Runchy would be happy about, that they didn't go with a runaway victory, and that Rockhampton did come back at them and made them work for their victory. But uh, I think they'd be very happy, uh, guys, tonight in the change room, and rightly so, and now they can get themselves ready for, for whoever they have to play in the grand final next week. OK, well, you can see it on ABC Sport, 5 o'clock next Saturday afternoon. It's the Frankston Blues from Melbourne against either Ballarat or Nunna Wadding from Melbourne. I hope you can join us from 5 o'clock. Liverpool Stadium in Sydney is the venue. The CBA Grand Final for 1995, plus the Women's Grand Final as well. From Frexton, Peter G saying goodbye. Great news. The furniture spot are now in Dandenong and to celebrate look at these spot on opening bargains. Bedside tables are being thrown out for just $19 each. Deluxe TV video cabinets are $39 each. Students and computer desks are crazy $109 each. Coffee tables just $39 each. And children's leather look chairs $39. It's on now at all three furniture spots. Fairfield, Melton and Dandenong. A lot of people found our last ad so delicious and wanted us to run it again. But we never do it. Because like our pasta, our ads have a definite use by date. So, here's a delicious new spinach fettuccine and carbonara sauce commercial. make me very angry, so only drink in moderation, alright? He means...